And as we do every Monday and Thursday, one o'clock, uh, we are live. I have my brother Fitzgerald Stevens uh, with us. He's a, he's a regular on the Search for Who platform. And today we're going to be discussing what you need to do, what you need to have in place uh, once you have reached that, or even before then, before you've reached that, that, that tipping point where you're like, hey, I'm ready to get out of corporate America. There are certain things that you need to have in place so you can have a smooth transition from corporate America to entrepreneurship. All right, and I think uh, sometimes, and primarily, you know, it put it like this. It's more and it's bigger than just let me put money in my 401k and have money in my savings account, which is important. I mean, trust me, all that's important. But while you're working in corporate America, you need to find a platform, service, something that can generate income. You know, in case the unexpected happens where you're you're let go, we downsized or whatnot, or we're to the point where or where you're just fed up and you're ready to go. And I think that's the issue, because I know plenty of people in corporate America who do not have multiple sources of income. Multiple, having multiple sources of income isn't limited to just being an entrepreneur. I mean, even if you're in corporate America, it's something that you should be practicing and implementing. What what are your thoughts on that, uh, Fitzgerald? Uh, yeah, you're 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 right. What, what um, uh, what when uh, a lot of a lot of often what I hear my my experience when I hear people talk about retirement, I I I I hear them mostly talk about the linear income, the one income that they have acquired, you know, by working uh that job, that profession for an X amount of uh, number of years. And 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 they are uh, and, and to receive a well deserved retirement. That's true, but rarely do I hear um, uh, people that, uh, you know who work uh, in corporate or or uh, any type of other uh, uh, any type of let's let's just say corporate for now that they're thinking like okay in addition to my pension my retirement package what am I planning on adding to that. Um, right. And I, I don't really see a lot of that being addressed right now. I mean, uh, I'm a uh, Don Ass and I are big proponents that you need to have multiple streams of income, be in real estate, um, you know, rental property. Uh, you know, our philosophy is, you know, you need to be you know, having royalties, residuals of dividends, but not just mm -hmm. one stream. You know, the the name, the, the true wealthy, the true, true wealthy uh, who are worry free in, in, in a realm of financial, they have multiple streams. Just in case one of those streams dry up, it doesn't affect your livelihood or your lifestyle one iota, you know, and you and that and that's you put yourself very much. Uh, can I say it like uh, on a kind of on uncertain ground, just depending on one retirement stream, uh, you know, and, and definitely in order to live, live the life you want, because it's been my understanding, Diane, you correct me if I'm wrong, generally that re that retirement income is not going to be what they paid you on your full time income. It's going to be part of that 40, 50, maybe sometimes 60 percent. But nevertheless, it will be less. I mean, how are you going to make up for that that difference in the reduction uh, in your income? Plus compounded with the fact that maybe your health costs are going up. You're, you're older, um, you know, and uh, good. And, uh, how are you going to make up for it to to combat the the inflationary costs? You know, with right, cost right. of goods and services going up, yet you're still stuck at one one income. So, so great for those of you who who are thinking like, okay, I'll be retirement soon, man. That, that's wonderful. But you know, uh, we want you to add, think about, okay, what can I do to add to that retirement? What other what other income streams can I add to do that? Because I know me personally, when I was presented with opportunities while I was in corporate America and making decent money, I said to myself, I mean, why? You know, I'm making good money at corporate America. I'm doing well. You know, I have the nice car. I got the fly loft, you know, downtown uh, L.A. You know, why? why I mean, why seek other opportunities? Um, but then what happens for sure? You know, the company starts playing with your money, um, you know, changing the commission structure. You know, we talk about this. We talk about this all the time. Changing com the commission structure. 
you know, you know, taking the key zip codes that were in your territory, they'll pull them and give them to another rep or move them to another location. Then once that started happening, Fitzgerald, I was like, okay, you know, uh, I need I need to start seeking uh, other opportunities. Uh, I know cats who are doing sales with me who are working two jobs. I mean, they'll they'll work CentOS and you know after their CentOS when they're sitting down with a customer after they present CentOS they're presenting uh, merchant services as far as uh, credit card processing. You know, uh, so it's it's just good to have one more than one thing going in regards to security because the last thing you want to happen is you know you only have one source of income and then you lose that source of income and then. I mean, it's 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 an uphill battle. Uh, you know, me myself, you know, we we're going to be dis discussing care bars. I wish I wish I would have took this opportunity serious. A year ago, two years ago, you why know, you, but, why you say that? Well, you know, that's that's about the third time you, you, you said that. I mean, uh, and a lot of times, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when Don S and I come in, we get our topic. We discuss our topic probably about two minutes before we come on. Maybe may, maybe a little bit more. Let's say at least up 10, 10, 15 minutes. We don't we freelance. You know, we just we just go go with the flow to see how it's gonna go. So that's an unsolicited comment. It's almost like we run a talk format. But Dinas, why do you say that? And be, and before you said that, I wanna uh, address a comment that Mr. Peterson made, Mr. Parson, Mr. Fabian Parson. He's absolutely right. A, a real estate, great. You know, more people have become wealthy than, than, than real estate. They know it is an incredible vehicle. It will continue to be uh, one. That's great. So you're doing something like that. Yes, that's a sweet multiple stream of income. But, you know, but sometimes, you know, you need you need good capital investments to get in there, especially if you're going to get the, the, the real sweet plumbing properties. But mm -hmm. I have a I have a um, I have a first cousin uh, in uh, Montgomery you know, uh, does extraordinary well with real estate and trucking. That's his thing. You know, he's in, he's in my carrot bar business, but his make his line income comes from his real estate portfolio and in his trucking that he rolls into real estate. So I'm a big, but huge proponent. That's definitely planning on getting into that myself. But, uh, so, so excellent point, Mr. Par Parson. Um, but Don asks, you know, you have said this, I wished I would have got started. Um, with with uh, this carrot bar opportunity, uh, uh, you've said that a couple about three times at least. Why do you keep saying that? Why why are you saying that? Because seeing where I'm at now, just starting taking this opportunity serious, just past July, just imagine where I'll be at if I would have took it serious two years ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but 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 you you bring you're bringing up you're bringing up the the thunder and the hustle. You know, too, and so you you know you're working uh you, you're working far as with that. Most of the things like when uh you, you're right, uh, you know uh we've talked a lot about um uh, sales positions. We said in Dynas alluded to the comment what, what your change of territories. Uh, don't think just because you're not in uh, you're not in sales or you you know like what our past career was that this can't happen to you. There's a there's a there's a, a three little words I want you to remember in, in the corporate environment today. It's called mergers and acquisitions. When a company buys your company, you know, and you better hope you're you're on the buying end because you know what you could be doing dynamite, being in a law firm, an architectural firm, uh, you know, a uh, 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 a huge conglomerate. Sometimes those guys, the, the guy who buys it, or you know, the company that absorbs you, they could come in and you could you could have all kinds of great benefits. You could be looking at a uh, uh, you know uh, a cush job. You could be looking at things like things systems are going good for you. You can see the trajectory. All of a sudden, they buy it. Oh, that's off the table. They come in. They 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 come in. They put their own people in place. They put their own systems in place. Sometimes sometimes they come in with the, the with the uh, with the idea they're going to reduce workforce. So you know so generally the person who the, the generally the company that gets absorbed they're the they're the employees that get you know fired or laid off because we simply don't need you anymore it, uh sometimes you have to take a uh, uh you have to take a pay cut for example my, my last job i was with this incredible company called uh called uh dex media then it turned into thrive well uh thrive thrive uh all of a sudden they decided they're going to buy uh uh yellow pages OK, and then we, we had there, there was some reps in Yellow Pages that was making very good six figures. Very, very nice. Thrive came in and absorbed that, that the, the, uh, the, the company, the former company I work with, Thrive, they came in and absorbed that. A lot of people had to take the motions that they want to stay. 
a lot of people couldn't fit into that culture, so they had to leave. What happened? You know, how do you just all of a sudden go from a six figure income to zero to out there looking for a job when it's something you done did about 10, 15, 20 years? You know, so so I, I've learned that change is inevitable. You know, it's going to come. So you have to got to prepare for it. Uh, you know, as opposed to be one of those guys like, how could they do this to me? You got to be have something in place. Well, you know, if this storm comes, you know, I can absorb that because I know that my lifestyle, my family's household is going to be uh, threatened income wise because I take chance to build to build something, you know, that is addition to what I primarily get my income by by way of a job. You know, so so that's what that's what I discovered. And I discovered mine on a uh, on um, on a thing that I saw signs happening before they came. And I'm glad I was proactive with my with my uh, with my care of our business before the tidal wave came, because had that would have came and that, uh, you know, and I, I didn't have anything like this built, you know, it would have been disastrous, mm -hmm. you know. And so so this is what we're trying to get. You know, this this is a topic we want to think about today. <laughs> you, 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 you told this story. Tell the story you tell me one time. The, the uh, story of the story of when you uh you went to I guess the Oh, 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 yeah. It's funny now, but it wasn't funny back then. Uh, you know, I, I was working this physician uh, uh, position up in Buffalo, New York. And keep in mind, you know, uh, some things that happened, you know, uh, the things that happened, not, not my fault, really. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a highly educated man, you know, uh, you know, bachelor's degree to University of Alabama, uh, you know, uh, did did a lot of right things, you know, worked hard, you know, kept my nose clean, uh, you know, uh, uh, no no criminal record where you could hold that against me, anything like that. So I just went to the grind. You know, I did I, one thing about me. I really didn't play the, the politics, the office politics game because it, it's, it's the it's the testing to me. My, my thing is, you know, if I do my job properly, you know, and, and, and if I'm if I'm uh, working hard and, and working for the promotions and I, I earn it, give it to me. But I since learned that, you know, uh, you yes, you have to know how to get along with, with, with the powers that be. You got, you know, because they can make and break your career. Long story shorthand, we I went to work at this company in uh, in um, uh, Buffalo, New York, you know, right around the corner from me. Cush job, you know, so I thought. And so we we uh, we, we was um we was on contract at work, I believe. And so it was a, a, a team of us. And then we had this Christmas party, Dinas. You know, it was, it was a cold January. You know, Buffalo, Buffalo, January in December is very cold. Uh, and so so we had just went through a Christmas party, guys, and they told us how much they appreciated us and everything. And, you know, and they gave us out some nice little gifts and all that kind of stuff. Really, really nice. So we're feeling good. Like, man, maybe they really like us here. You know, it's so, <laughs> God, it's so funny. So I walk, the, I walk up. Uh, so I decided I was going to go get some Wendy's chili. I remember this good because I love Wendy's chili. Wendy's right across the street. And then I realized I left my umbrella at the job. It was raining and I left my umbrella. It was on a Friday. And so let me go back and get my go get get my umbrella. So they gave us like a key card. And so we would take, for example, something like this. We would swipe it and get in the building, you know, swipe the card. All of a sudden, the door turned, the dock turns green. You just go ahead and go in. So, so it's, it's, uh, I'll go in there. I go back and get my umbrella. I swipe the card. It's red. I'm like, okay, and think nothing about it. <laughs> swipe, it again, clean it yeah, up. swipe it again. It's red. I'm like, oh, no. In my mind, I know what's going on. You know, I know something's going on. So I'm like, rub it like this. Swipe it. It's still green. Finally, someone came in and I came behind them. I talked to the security guard. Uh, uh, I had been fired. I had been fired, and, and 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 it was the smoothest firing I ever had in my life. I didn't even know it, you know. So they just they just totally blanked that department out. I didn't have a job, you know. So I had to go back and tell my wife. Then I, you know, I don't got a job. No fault of my own. I was just expendable. But but corporations do it in a very sneaky way. I don't have no tolerance for the way they do stuff like that. Uh, you know, they uh, they talk about that that, that loyalty um, the things, but family, they don't give you any family, type of respect. Family. Give me a two week notice, but they can fire you in two seconds. You know, so I don't I don't I don't have any type of uh, any type of love for them. So, so I learned, but I learned to look out for my business. Now, my carrot bar business was not doing what it's doing now. I was just in the beginning of building that. I don't, man. I probably had about maybe five or six hundred people, as opposed to five, close to five thousand now. So I didn't really, I didn't really 
see it yet because in my mind I had to go out there and get a job, Dinas. That's what you know. That's what you know you, you're trained to do. And so and so that that happened. And since then, a couple of times like that, a couple of things have happened in my career, unbeknownst to me. You know, you can't help it. You get sick. You know, you can't you can't help it. You know, I, I've I've had a, a, a catastrophic illnesses from bone marrow transplants to so you know my, not my fault. You know, for uh, you know so so in a lot of things, you know, life just happens. But I do know this: whether life happens or it doesn't, you got to have have to have an income. You know, and 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 you know, and you got to have something coming in that that you couldn't work. I've been in positions where I couldn't work well over a year. When I was when I was uh, 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 healing from my uh, my aplastic anemia diagnosis, that's a fancy word for saying blood leukemia. You know, thank God, that, you know, he, he spared my life on that. But had it wouldn't have been for my 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 family and an incredible social worker who had got me help, I don't know what I would have did. I mean, I I just don't know. I'm quite happy to say. You know that happened. You know that happened about 26 years ago. I don't uh, deal with that now, but I also got another diagnosis when I was so, well since I've been up here. So um, that I'm not going to get into. But things life happens. You got. I, I, I still remember. You know, but we're not going to get into the diagnosis. I still remember the phone call, uh, the conversation me and you had that day. Like I still remember that, like yesterday. And that and that conversation is really really you know it got me to think because th th during that conversation i was mentally checking out of corporate america and i was like okay i'm going to have to find something that could you know replace corporate america and i'm like i just don't have it i have it but i'm just not passionate about it and that 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 conversation really uh i, I would say hit home and really really touched me I was up in well in New York. I was up in well in New York, Dinas, when I called you. And all guys, all this little confidence and bravado that you see up right there, Dinas could tell you, no, man, when I talked to him, I was talking to him like I was a six year old boy. I mean, that diagnosis that so took my confidence and, you know, put me in fear and everything. And that man right there is one of the guys that, you know, he's, he's a friend. His brother, I reached out to him, you know, thank God I reached out and, uh, and, and he just listened. You know, and he and uh, and 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 he uh, helped. I remember, I remember, uh, Dinas sent me fifty dollars. I remember that because I didn't really even have gas money. You know, my in the in the world. And thank you for doing that, Dinas. Again, I want to thank you, public, because you have no idea what you did for me, man. And uh, and and so so what what happens? It took my confidence. And and and, and whether and if you're in what, and no matter what job you're on, or no matter what you do in life, you've got it. Confidence is the currency confidence is your currency call it belief but confidence is what you know like i can get the job done i can i can i can i can i can do the lawyer brief i can i can design the project i can get the sale if that's taken away from you you're done and so that's what happened and dinas was the one that taught me back on that still my carrot bar business is in, in in its infancy it wasn't able to support me like it does right now but i knew but but i was just beginning i just it was just budding a little bit and, you know, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I was scared because I didn't have an income. Uh, uh, I didn't I didn't have that, nor did I have any prospects to do it. I've learned that it's much harder to find another income when you when you don't got one. In other words, it's much harder to find a job when you don't got one. You oh, know? Okay. So, let, me, let me stop it right there. So at CentOS, there's a saying in order to get a job, you have to have a job. Some companies won't deal with you if, they, if you're not working. They, right. they look at you. They, they don't care about the downsides of the economy. They don't care about that. They look at you like you're lazy, like right. you're unmotivated, that you're that, that you're un, unhirable and everything. Well, I guess they probably will look at me like that. I, I've been full time in care bar since February, you know, so this is what I do. So they look at me, they look at me like that. Fine. You know, so I put on their entrepreneur because really I don't I don't need them. You know, if I want to go out there and get something to supplement my income, fine. But 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 I much rather sit around here and create it. By by uh, by by talking to people and helping them build their incomes and me build mine and stuff. So that's a much more that's a much more uh, uh, powerful thing. You know, Don asked in, in conclusion that what what I do with, you know, my care of our business and what you do, it's not work. It doesn't seem like work, although I am working, but it, it doesn't it doesn't seem like that because you know what? Uh, you know, we're, we're 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 helping people, helping ourselves and stuff and, and build a nice income now. What do I do with the income that we're going to build? Eventually, I'm going to take Mr. Fabian's advice. I'm going to roll that into real estate. I got a big, I got a big thing for us for for tax liens and 
and foreclosure properties. Tampa is full of them, as well as many cities, uh, you know, uh, around America. I want to get maybe a, a real bring it into laundromats, coinless laundromats, because getting into those a lot when I was in college and undergrad, I had to go there and pay at, you know, hardly ever seen the owner there. And I'm real big in the parking lots with the arms that you don't have to empower employees next to like hospitals or good things like that. That's a nice little stream of income. I used to have a parking lot business. So I think more in terms of investors. But but, but what do I do with the carrot bar income? Why am I so big about this? Because it gives me the base and the funnel that I can use to diversify those other income streams. You know, and so 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 with anything you have to have, you got to have some mainstream to come in that you could branch in to go ahead and, and, and create those other streams. So this is what this is what Carrot Bars allows that uh, and I to do for ourselves. Yeah. In fact, let me read a couple comments. Uh, first of all, everyone, please hit that like button as you come to the chat room. Please hit the like button. Really appreciate it. Also, what we want you what we want you all to do. There's a link in the chat room. It's my affiliate link. Click on the link. Sign up as an affiliate. You're going to get a personal phone call from me, and then I'm going to connect you to Fitzgerald Stevens, who can help guide you and uh, go into detail about the uh, Care Bars opportunity. Uh, at the end of this video, when you watch the replay, you'll see the link right here on, on the screen and also in the description. Uh, Fab shout out to Fabian. Fabian said the key to financial survival is controlling, eliminating your debt load, and then producing multiple streams of income along with continuous expansion. Also, it's important to constantly expand your skill set and knowledge base. You know what? I, you know, Dinas, I was just looking at, at Fabian's uh, uh, comments right there, you know, and, and, and I don't know if he's in their carrot bar business or not. Would you be opposed to just sending this man a link to come over here and break off some of that knowledge? You Because I don't want you guys to just think this is over one thing. Yes, our business is carrot bars and our business is gold and, and gold backed cryptocurrency. We do pretty good. But you know what? I like to hear from uh, men like this. Obviously, you know, he seems to have a financial uh, 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 economic and financial IQ. You know, so I don't know if we could briefly get him get him in here. Uh, Fabian is not on my care in my care bars business. But I don't think he is. I don't recognize the name, yeah, but, but, I, but I'm not calling because he's in your care bar. But I'm calling okay. because of the intelligence that he's speaking on the issues wow. that we're talking about. Uh, right now, see, it's it's good to have a, 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 another layman's perspective. Right. No, you don't got to be doing what we're doing. You don't have right. to be doing what you're doing, but but I like the way he's flowing and stuff like that. So so, uh, Mr. Fabian, I'm extended. Hey, Hey, Fabian, what I do, Fabian, I'll go ahead and send you the link if you want to hop on. By all means, um, hop on. I'll go ahead and send you the link right yeah, now. That's if you want to hop on, because I'm liking the way you're flowing, man. Yeah, I really do. And so, and so that's about that, that's about what it's about. It's about creating multiple streams of income. Don't lose that. It don't make a difference what you do. It don't make a difference where you uh, 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 where, uh, what you do far as work or you live in. It doesn't make a difference where you are in the globe. You know, uh, uh, whether Africa, the America, South America, the the, uh, the Asia, wherever you are. You know, you, you're gonna have to have a multiple stream income. You're gonna have to. That's what the that's what the wealthy they they master that. They master creating additional income besides what they're doing now. Uh, you know, Dinas, I really want to eventually man, to see both of you and I move into the investing quad quadrant the, the, as an investor. Because you know what? I, I, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, you got certain ground of people. They really don't deal, deal with employees. They just go ahead and invest, whether it's with Uber, whether it's in a plot of land or, and stuff like that. And then they reap the return on their investments and build a juggernaut a portfolio off of that, like a like a. Um, uh, like a uh, like the uh, like some of these hedge fund guys or Warren Buffett, you know. Uh, sure, he he created jobs, but I want to be more so an investment. See, I get that simply because uh, you know I've owned two businesses. I I know what uh, I know what the payroll tax and employee things, and I know about a lot of the liabilities that can come from that. Uh, I don't want I don't want a brick and mortar business, per se, but I want the income that would come by way of a business. So so that's how I want to go down eventually go down the road, you know, to. Uh, to, to really, really put put a portfolio, my financial portfolio together, because I want to be able to travel. I don't want right. to show, uh, show up at a place, you know, that that I got to actually come in there and, and someone say, right. hey, "Here's this, and this is what's happening. This is the problem." I don't want that. I want to be able to move or, or go all over the world and just uh, and just be able to, to make my money coming in from everywhere. So, so you know, that's my thing. Is that Mr. Fabian? Yes, it is. Hey man, is that a steel hat you got on? No, no, it's a hard hat, my brother. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Look like my yeah, skills, baby. For money. <laughs> it's a hard hat. Uh, so, greetings to both of you, brothers. Thank you for the information that you provide to us. Uh, so many. Uh, as I said, you know, the simple solution to me is no. So, just speaking from my experience, 
the conditions that need to be met for me to make any transition to Africa or any other continent or country, um, I need three things. Number one, I need my debts to be 100% eliminated. What that means to me, uh, you know, being debt free is no school loans, no car loans, no mortgages, no credit cards, no installment payments of any type. All that needs to be completely eliminated. Um, because, uh, you know, to me, debts make you immobile. All right. So we want to get rid of them. Because Say, that as again, you got Say that again, sir. I said debts make you immobile. Never so we want to get rid of them. Yeah, it makes you immobile. It slows you down. Right. Okay. Because simply debt is an instrument that takes away from your ability or uh, uh, the amount that you're able to invest. You know, that's all debt does. It takes away from the money that you have that you could have used to invest in something else. Okay. So condition number one for me is to get rid of all of the debts. Condition number two is to have probably about $250,000 liquid um, inside of a, an account somewhere. All right. Cause you need to have operating, you know, capital. All right. If, for whatever you want to do. Condition number three uh, is to have about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month in passive income. All right, um, and for me, that passive income would come as of right now would come from real estate because that's what I do the most. Um, as a matter of fact, Dinas, um, I closed on a property yesterday in uh, right. Akron. Uh, Akron. Okay. Okay. I, I ended up getting it done. Deal. It recorded yesterday. Another one in the bag. So, and, and I, you know, I'm not. You know, coming on here like I'm some type of super wealthy, highfalutin type of guy. I'm a regular working man with a college education um, and trade skill. I went to carpentry school. I have a bachelor's degree in biology. But I understand how debt hurts, you know, how debt hurts us and it prevents us from making the moves that we want to make. And I also know that I don't want to show up in another country, you know, bringing American debt with me. Right. I want to I want to show up with a clean slate and money to build. So wherever I go, I'm making that place better. Right. And not being a hindrance to the people that are there. Um, in addition to that, I know that, you know, coming going to another place, even though we have this um, genetic attachment, emotional attachment, spiritual attachment um, to various countries in Africa or to the continent itself. When we show up in that place, we're showing up you know, technically as immigrants, right? Because we don't know the culture. We don't speak the language. We don't know the land, right? So when you show up, I mean, just look at how immigrants are treated here in the United States. They may be taken care of by their own people who are also immigrants, but for the vast majority of Americans, Americans have somewhat of a disdain for, you know, for immigrants, for people who are not from here, all right? Uh, I mean, uh, depending which state and which color they lean. I know, out there, I know out there in L.A. is a totally different uh, situation, but, but, but that's another show. That's another show. That's another show. Yeah. You already know what it is out here in L.A. You yeah. already know. So, uh, so then when we show up in Africa, essentially, we're going to be showing up as immigrants. So there may be kind people there that are willing to help us. I know uh, I heard Amin Ra mention how when he showed up in Kenya, people took care of him. And I'm glad that, you know, that brother was able to come from the U.S., you know, to Kenya and be uh, absorbed like that. But we must be prepared for if we show up and people decide to start treating us like how the South Africans treated Nigerians, if we start showing up in these countries in numbers. So the best thing for us to do is when we show up, make sure that we have something to bring and not, you know, show up with our hands out, you know, looking looking to get something. Mr. Right? Fabian, have you been listening about uh, uh, some of the broadcasts when I've been bringing out, uh, bringing out that point? I've been, uh, uh, I, I said, my, my, my father taught me he said, "You never leave home without money." Okay, that's and, and, and I and I, I wholeheartedly believe that. And see now, now, with, with, uh, my my logic is uh, uh, my logic thinking of going over the going over uh, Africa. I ain't interested in getting a job. I ain't interested in being yeah. at the mercy of the local economy. Now I would. I'm 55, and I would have thought like this if I was 25. I ain't. Right. I ain't interested in going over. There. I'm looking to take my own own money with me. But, you know, have my own hustle and where I can go ahead and create anything, you know, instead of looking around because I don't know the territory. I have said before, and uh, just because just because I have this black skin, that don't qualify me just to fall into the Africa. And they say, well, hey, you know, I'm here and I expect to be, you know, I'm seeing a lot of things. Some things I'm seeing over in certain lands over there. 
it's kind of kind of back me off. You know, I mean, like like say South Africa, I'm seeing I'm like, well, is that the is that the way they're treated? Some of the some of the comments, I, uh, you know, I, I've received uh, even on the stream here, just you know, for, for stuff. I, I, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. You know, so you know, I, you know, I, I would like to think I'm be welcome, and I would like to be thinking like, like I would need. And I'm not talking about everyone. No, I said some, but but nevertheless, I would like to go over there debt free. I would plan on going there with, with capital where I can build. I will plan on going over there, you know, with an economic uh, 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 strength that like, hey, you know what? I can establish things. I can get my home. I can establish businesses. I'm not really worried. Then I can be, be able to move in the streets. I, it, you know, and uh, you know, I have um, uh, I have elderly parents over here in, in uh, southeast Alabama where I'm from. And you know what? That you know, they ain't gonna want me to disappear five years at a time. They're gonna want to see me, just like you know, just like they are. They're accustomed to doing right now. I want to be able to get back and forth. So, so it's it's a little different. It's a little different. Yeah, I want to travel, but you're right. That is a stranglehold. That is yeah, a stranglehold, and you can't do anything without it. Cause you know what? They're calling you on the phone, asking where's my money, and rightfully so. And you know, you're not getting the proper wages, the the, the increases on your wages. Now, with you. You, you, as a as a, a man with a biology degree, that tells me a lot about you. But the man to go out there to, and earn a carpentry skill, because I was taught before I left home that ass a little bit for your time, man. They was always taught you always get you a trade. That's what they would say. Whether you can always get you a trade, whether you cut hair, whether you can fix a pipe, because you never you're never uh, unemployed with that. But that carpentry degree, that man can take that anywhere in the world and still yeah. make it. That that's correct. I mean, and even right now, I was selling diners. I was about this close, that close to canceling my trip to go with them to Nigeria because I'm taking a, a residential electrical installation class. Because all the properties that I buy, you know, for anybody who rehabs or is you know thinking about getting into uh, rehabilitation of houses, uh, you know, electrical is costly. Um, HVAC is costly. Plumbing is costly. So the more of those things that you know how to do. Uh, the more money you're going to save yourself and you increase your uh, odds of being successful in this business. So, yes, I went to carpentry school. I lived in Atlanta. I went to Atlanta area tech. Um, I worked for the city of Atlanta uh, for uh, until I moved back to California. And I would not have had the success in real estate had I not uh, gone to carpentry school and developed the confidence um, and develop the skill to just look at things that other people ran from and, and you know, and I choose to run into. Um, when you know how to do the work yourself and you don't look at the amount of work, if all you say is, you know, it's just work, you know, that's it. And the more I do it, the more I do it, the more progress I'll make. And then eventually the work will be complete and then I can reap the benefit. But you need you need you need to have some skills in order to do that. So you're not afraid. You know, so when you see a wall, you're not afraid of tearing that drywall out to see, you know, what the conditions of the studs are. You know, a, a lot of us um, have a lack of success because we have a fear because of a lack of a, you know, because of a lack of a proper skill set. So I highly recommend all brothers and sisters both to, to, to go get those trade skills if you're planning um, to invest in real estate. And all over this country, Dinus will tell you, I'm not lying. Every time I see a listing, for the most part, I send them to Dinus. You know, I, I show them to them. You you mentioned um, doing tax lien sales. We just got eight tax lien sales um, in Maryland in May, right, um, in Baltimore, okay? Uh, so Dinus will tell you that I'm telling the truth about that. And I'm also buying in Georgia and Ohio and California, all right? And like I said, I'm a blue-collar guy. This is my work uniform. You know, I'm, I'm not running around here like I'm just super filthy rich. I'm just somebody who works, 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 and then works some more. And I'm very cautious uh, about my debt load. OK, um, so it's important to have multiple streams of income. And and that that is a key factor in relocating anywhere. You need to be able to go to another place and be able to establish business have a skill set, be able to create a micro economy wherever you go. Um, and as far as I know, real estate is one of those things that's universal. If you find dirt and that dirt can be built upon and there's a need for housing, then real estate is something that you can make money off of everywhere. And in Nigeria, it's a very good business if you're planning to move to Nigeria, because here in the United States where people pay month to month, for their rent 
in Nigeria, they pay for the whole year. Front. Yeah. They pay for the whole year. So mm -hmm. if you built, if you go there, buy the dirt, build the, the hostel, and you rent that hostel out, you're getting all of your money for the whole year up front. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. But you have to have the skill set. You know, you have to have the, the be in the proper position to, to make that happen. Absolutely. Guys, make sure you hit that like button and, as you come into the chat room. And once again, we're, the, uh, my link is in the chat room. All right. Go to the link. Click on the link Care for Care Bars. Click on the affiliate tab. Register. Once you register, I'll get a notification. I will call you personally and then I will uh, connect you with Fitzgerald, uh, Brother Stevens. And also the link is in the uh, description and also on the screen. Um, so make sure you guys um, do that. Mr. Mr. Fabian, I'd like to thank you because you know what? You know, um, often people hear me talk about, uh, uh, hear Dynast to talk about our, our gold business, our international gold business, the carrot bars. You know, gold is money. You know, it, it does pretty good. But I, I, I don't think I have gotten the point across like I've been wanting to get multiple streams of income. You know, you 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 have, you have painted this like a Picasso painting, man, doing that because a you have the expertise, you have the experience, and the fact of the matter, you're doing it. Okay, cool. so that, that that's powerful. That's powerful within itself. That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. When I said about it, carrot bars, yeah, that's that's my stream, that's my hustle far so now. I want to branch it into something. But here's another thing I've learned. At, 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 at my age, I ain't in the business of losing money, gentlemen. I ain't in the business. And so I don't I don't just go in there because someone tell me, a partner tell me, you got a good idea. Now, I, uh, I will partner with you. Uh, you know, I, you would be the you would be the guy I like to drop like a half a million dollars because I, you know, once we sit and break bread, because I'm like I'm looking at your expertise, I'm looking at what you did, I'm looking at what you're talking. We sit around and talk. See, I will. This is type. These are the type of relationships I look for. You know, mm -hmm. people like Dinas, people who are doing it, people like Mr. Fabian, people who are doing it. You know, partnerships. Looking to make myself just because I don't have an expertise. In real estate, I know I want to get in there, but I better consult this man because I ain't in the business of losing money. I'm quite sure, you know, hey, we put the right capital up. You got to put skin in the game. Talk is cheap. You know, so I come to him say, this is what I want to do. Can you guide me? Okay, I see. What You know, what? what is the ROI? You know, what's your margins? What are you looking for? I, like, I know enough to talk by that. Now, so I would defer to him and I would follow his counsel because he's an expert of doing it in his field. The, with, with, uh, with, with tours and African uh, uh, adequate, you know, making money over in Nigeria or over in two continents. I would defer to uh, Dinas. He's a friend. He's a partner. He's an expert in the field. When it comes to gold, international gold business, gold cryptocurrency, I'm an expert in what I do to build my carrot bar global business, and that's what that's what I am. But you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna acquire wealth and you're gonna acquire these streams of incomes, I, I think I, I don't want you to miss this thing right here. You need partners. You need the right partners. And, you know, as long as you're doing audible by those partners, because when you come to partnership, you got one time to really mess that partnership up. But but Correct. partners are interested in making money. And so so you need different uh, different people. My brother, my my youngest brother is a corporate attorney. You know, my middle my middle brother is a uh, is a, a, a senior a budget director. So between a uh, legalist and uh, legality and and uh, and numbers, I got both of those covered by my family. I don't need I don't worry about that. You know, but but sure, but but I talk about real estate. But until this man, I don't know nobody like this man that's really doing it. Uh, that, that has that expertise. Getting on and talking about what, listening to a Grant Cardone real estate deal is a whole lot different when you ask like Mr. Fabian in my cell phone and uh, like, hey, what do you think about this property? Here's about a hundred dollars for consulting fee for your information because I respect you enough for your time to give you something. Like, what do you think? Is this a good deal? You know, is this something? And so if it is, maybe maybe he will want to go in on it or maybe he'll back me off of it. But that's why you got to have relationships in order to preserve your wealth. Just because, yeah. uh, you know, you know, you got to have that and you got to develop this network of people, you know, who, who are uh, about it like you are about building wealth, but has expertise. You don't got to be in the care bar business. You don't got to be in the bear bar business, but you better perform. You better uh, get you a think tank, a, a, a wealth group in order to help you grow your wealth. And the only benefit you, you bring for that is you help them grow their wealth. You got to have partnerships. So uh, would either you gentlemen like to elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, uh, Dinus. So yeah, I, 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 I agree with partnerships. Um, I, I have to say this. 
success is sometimes a very lonely road. All right. Mm. Um, I started investing in real estate in Atlanta in 2008, uh, December 18, 2008. I bought mm. my first property um, in Decatur, Georgia. I still I had, I had, I had, I had just I had no. Let's see. I had just missed you because right around that time I just moved, moved to L.A. See, so yeah, I, I brought my first. I, I purchased my first property in 2008 in Decatur. I bought my first investment property December 19, 2009, and then I've been buying since then. And when I bought my first property, I didn't even have. Uh, I wasn't a full, even a full time employee. I worked for the city of Atlanta as an engineering intern. Right. Meaning I didn't have any benefits. If I missed a day of work, I didn't get paid. It was scary. And what got me into um, purchasing real estate was that the city of Atlanta uh, had a layoff where they they fired. They laid off 500 people and I was shaking in my boots, man. I thought I was going to be one of the 500. And I knew that if I got laid off at that time, I would have to go get another job, work another two years, you know, to have consistent W-2s, you know, to before I could buy a house. So before the hammer dropped or what I thought was going to be the hammer that dropped on me, I went out, I found a property like in the middle of the night. I met the agent in the dark indicator in a property that didn't have no lights at about 12 midnight. And I put the contract in that night. And the next day I was in escrow and I got, I ended up getting the house uh, for 69,000 at the time it was worth 150. I got an FHA loan. And uh, so I didn't have to put that much down 3.5%. And, um, and then from that point, I said, once I got into the property, I was thinking to myself, they didn't, I didn't end up getting fired. 500 other people did, but I didn't, you know, thank God. And, uh, I said to myself, I said, you know what? I cannot be in a situation where mm -hmm. I have the carpet pulled from up under me. Right. So what I did was since I intentionally purchased a house that was, that had a, a low price, but had equity. I pulled $20,000 cash out of my house and I bought my, uh, in a year and I bought my next um, property. I paid cash for it and I didn't have a mortgage. So by buying my first investment property and paying cash for it, I paid $13,000 for that property, but I owned it free and clear. And that was what I consider my ace in the hole. And that was also in Decatur. And uh, by purchasing that property, free and clear, it gave me confidence. So then I knew at that point that if I ever got fired from my job, I wouldn't be homeless, right? right? I had a face in a hole, you know? And that's, that's, that's the type of thinking that you have. As black people in America, the carpet is always pulled from up under us at some point in time. And what ends up happening is we're, unpre you know, we're unprepared for when it happens, right? So Dinah's you know, they 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 took your 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 sales uh, area away where you was making all your money and you got deflated. Right. The carpet was pulled from up under you. That wasn't mm -hmm. right. You know, the carpet got pulled from up under you. The carpet was getting ready to get pulled from up under me. And I said, you know, before they pull it, I need to make sure that at the very least I have somewhere to stay. Right. And 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 then from that point, I start saying, OK, so now I have this investment property. It was in terrible condition. Right. For thirteen thousand dollars, you're not going to get you know, a fully um, restored mansion. All right. It, it, the house, when I bought it, it looked like a haunted house. And I, I said, OK, this isn't this property is in a decent area. It looks bad. It has enough bedrooms, enough bathrooms. But I need to uh, get it to a point where if I did have to live here, I would be, you know, I would be comfortable living here. How do right. I do that? So then I went to Atlanta uh, Technical College through their carpentry program, it took me 18 months. So, you know, I'd go to work from seven in the morning to three in the afternoon. Then I'd go to school, to carpentry school from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. I leave carpentry school and I work for two hours from about 10.30 to about 12.30, one o'clock in the morning, go home, go to sleep, get up the next day, go to work. And then on the weekends, on Saturday and Sunday, when I was off, I'd work from about seven or eight in the morning all the way until midnight, until the property was done. And every time I went and learned something at school, I take what I learned at school and I'd yeah. apply it to the property. And then from that point, everything blew up. Decatur and it was just really that simple. Market. I'm sorry to interrupt. Please continue, sir. No, I said and from that point, every everything blew up. You know, I, I started saying, OK, so now I had a, a template. Right. By doing my first property, I had a template right. for how things could get done. So I continued to live in the first property I bought. After I finished the second property, I started renting it out and I've been renting 
that property out to the same tenant for the past since 2000, like 2010, 2011. So I, I've been collecting rent money free and clear from the same tenant for like eight or nine years. In Decatur, Georgia, that's a booming area. When back in 2008, I was living down in McDonough, Georgia. And so, yeah. it, it, so that matter of fact, you know, uh, uh, Atlanta, my company used to be Atlanta Tire and Auto Service right off of Brady, 1055 Brady Avenue. You know, you remember the club, The Compound? Yes, I do. I remember the compound. Remember the, co yeah. the, 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 the building across the street? Yes, sir. That was me. Okay, well, so uh, that, that was my parking lot hustle that I was running around charging cash fifty dollars a night to park car. Uh, <laughs> you know, yes, so sir. you know, I had my part, but but here's another thing: had a booming company. I was uh, I was the marketing manager, so I bought all the business. I knew what was flowing around in there and and, uh, and stuff. But here's what happened: I, I didn't I didn't have I, I was business I was business green. I, I I had worked so hard to get myself uh, my credit uh, established, and and so I thought a line of credit was uh. I, I thought a line of credit was debt. Didn't understand. Just didn't know. Didn't have. Didn't right, know, right. You know, just go and shoot an error. So I didn't have a line of credit. To all of a sudden, the, the, cra the crash started happening. And and, uh, and so when I bought the when I bought that company, I made these projections. I said, you know, my parking hustle on the compound, I could pretty much well put some money together, and I can use that to really give me a, my emergency fund. That was fine. The compound closed down about six months, gentlemen. I didn't have anything to make up for that revenue. You may remember that they was doing renovation. Yeah, and then and so I was literally digging in my personal, personal savings, personal savings. I wind up losing that because I didn't have other streams of income. I mean, my God, payroll taxes are blasting me. And here's the thing: I was, I, I was, uh, I was uh, repairing vehicles. That's how I met Dynastamir. But, but unlike you, Mister Fabian. I didn't have the skills to go out in the garage to repair vehicles. So my oh, employees could literally hold me hostage. They could yeah. demand more. They could, you know, not show up. I didn't have the skills to go up under the hood to mix it, to do it. That taught me a very important lesson. I would never deal with a business I don't know. Correct. I would right. never, I would never deal with a business I, I don't know again. So, so if I can't do it, I'm not really not interested because if you get yourself out there, someone can literally crush you. So that's what happened. Living in McDonough, Georgia, communicating down there, and so I learned a lot of a lot of things about business. And if you're the structure of your business is just as important as the business, but if you can't do the work, they literally have you by hostage. You literally, you know, you by hostage. Like real estate, people think of uh, getting on a, a property. What if you don't? You know, when he's talking. When he's talking carpet and electrical, while he's thinking like it's a job, you know what I'm thinking? Man, paycheck. I'm thinking I gotta pay this man. And you right, know, right. and I, I know for a fact the electrical is not cheap. Well, he's going in there, man. I can go ahead and, and do the build out and stuff like that. And I can tear out the studs. I'm like, man, I gotta pay this man. You know, see, so that's getting into my thing. And see, the thing is, that's why it's important to go and get the trade skill. Because in, in true, electrical is not that expensive. Right. You can buy, you know, you're typically in a house, depending on what you're wiring up, you know, you're, you're dealing with 14, 2, 14, 3, uh, you know, 12, 2, 12, 3, you know, wire. You have, you know, your receptacles, your light fixtures, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you have your panel, your breakers, et cetera, et cetera. All of that material is very inexpensive. You can you can purchase enough material to rewire an, an entire house. For I say probably about twelve hundred dollars, but the electricians, at least here in California, to wire that house, which will take them just a couple of days, will charge you seventy five hundred dollars and up. But if you have that skill set, guess how much it costs you? Twelve hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. exactly. And that's how, and that's how you win in this business. But you can't be afraid. I meet so many people. I come across so many people because I don't. I'm not one of those type of guys that try to hold information hostage from people. I'm not afraid of competition. You know, some people say, well, I got this information. I don't want to give it out because, you know, the opportunity may dry up for me if there's too much competition. I don't right. feel that way. I think that as long as you're doing a good job, you'll always have work. Right. As long as you're, you know, your 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 workmanship is excellent. You know, you will always be in favor. So I share this information with every brother and sister that I meet. Unfortunately, what I get in response is that I'm not going to school. You know, I'm not going to school. I don't got time for that. I'm too old to go to class or, 
some other excuse as to why they won't go do it, but they still have these dreams and desires. And I, and in my mind, I'm a very straightforward, you know, nuts and bolts thinking type of guy, you know, problem solution. That's how I think. Right. Right. And I, and I'm like, how are you going to get to this point that you want to get to, but you're not willing to put in the work? It's just not going to, you know, you think somebody is just going to give it to you. You know, do you think that it's just going to, you know, is it going to fall out of the sky? Is it going to happen? By it you know, you and know? you brought up a very good point. You know, it, but since we do you you guys know. No, no, you don't know. I'm going to say we, we started this care, this care bar of uh, uh, business. With Dynas and I collaborating about uh, about three months ago, do you got do you guys know as of right now, the uh, Dynas team is a fraction of mine, but he has out earned me every week since we started together. Wow. Okay. Wow. I, I, okay. I'm, I'm about five thousand deep. Dynas has a little bit. He's under six hundred, but you know he has out earned me, including to this week, today, last week, ever since we started coming there. Why? It was because he did more it did more work to me. Yeah, I say yeah. You know he's out there sponsoring and stuff, and I'm helping this team. But but that's not my point. The the uh, Dynas, tell me how many times I called you and say slow down. Tell me how many times I called you and said, man, you making more hustle, dude. I can't work with you, man. You get more props, man. They coming all to you, man. I can't. I gotta live. No, the only thing I'm calling him, you know, to check your back office. Man, I'm happy for you. Keep it up. But he has out earned me every week because because he's putting in more work than I'm doing. He's sponsoring more. I'm in his leg building depth, what you call deep. And I don't care because you know what? That's my brother. He's sitting around that thing. And my thing is, uh, uh, Fabian, he's in my organization anyway. And so if he's winning, I'm automatically winning. You know, and it's, it's yeah. not it's not a matter of things. So so it, but but you brought up a good good point. You got to be willing to do the work. My youngest brother, my youngest brother, attorney, constantly tells that he drills that in me. You got to do the work. There is no substitute doing work, learning the skills. Now, I'll submit to you, those of you who want to do real estate, but you're not willing to do what Fabian do. And I put myself in this category, willing to learn the game, not just to flip in the houses, but willing to learn the, the upkeep and the repair. You ain't ready for the game. You know, because, you know, it's going to drive you. You're not you're simply not ready. And for those of you guys, when I when I, we, we talk to you on carrot bars and I'm looking for certain key things, I'm looking for certain key uh, uh, functions out, out of people to see traits. If you're not willing to, to work, if, you, if you're not willing to to, to, to make calls and you're not willing to, you know, to talk people, you're not willing to get the training and you just want the lifestyle that Dynas and I have, but you're not willing to put the work. You think we're just going to build it for you. You know, you're not you're not ready for success. You know, you you're you're not if you can't save and pay yourself first, you're not ready to be wealthy. You're not ready to be rich. You know, because if you if you think if you and you know if, if that's the mentality you got, hey man, keep going down a quick trip and you know and in a local gas station and get those mega millions and no power balls. You know, I mean, no, I'm not trying to be excited, but things just don't happen. You got to make them happen by a plan that you put into action and that you consistently work. You know, when you guys hear me say, oh, well, 5,000 guys, it took me four and a half years to get there. And, and I would also say, too, whenever you're planning or at least whenever I'm putting together a campaign uh, to get something done, when I'm in my strategy session, I always ask myself how what what scenario would have to come up in order to destroy my business? You know, what would take me out the game? And then I try to insulate myself, create uh, protections against you know, that um, I think that's something that as uh, black people, we really need to start doing. Think critically about our enemies or, you know, let's just say scenarios that could undermine our business and try to insulate ourselves against them because they're coming. I've had people in business do all sorts of things and, you know, and, I, and I've been able to repel them uh, many, many times just by thinking ahead. Right. Because it, it, when people, the, the, the evil and hate that some people have towards us in this world, when they see that we're doing well, their mission becomes to undermine our progress, right? But if we are to continue making progress, we have to be able to defeat our enemies when they come to our door. We can't just keep building things and letting them get torn down, you know, because we're not being assertive or aggressive or, or taking uh, preemptive steps to stop people from undermining us. 
So that needs to be part of any any type of business that you're getting into. You need to know it inside and out. You need to know what type of things are available that can hurt you. And you need to put in uh, uh, some some protection to insulate yourself from that. And that brings me to why I buy the way that I buy. So I live in California. I buy properties in Baltimore. Why do I buy properties in Baltimore when I can buy property in California? I like to buy property in places that I can pay cash for properties. Right. California is extremely expensive. I don't have a million dollars to just fork over on, you know, a single family home in the middle of South Central LA. I don't have that, right? But I do have five, 10, 15, $20,000, you know, that I can buy in, you know, uh, Ohio or in uh, Georgia, you know, kind of the prices have really gone up in Georgia, but um, in, in Baltimore, I can pay cash there. So then why do I pay cash? Because when you have a debt, right, these enemies that we're talking about, debt is your enemy. All right. And, and that's how I think about things. If I have a mortgage, right, the mortgage, the person, the, the entity that holds that mortgage can call that mortgage due. And I have to come up with the money right away and pay them or they can take the property away from me. Right. But when you own a property outright, it removes the stress that you have to make a monthly payment, to make a monthly mortgage payment. And by by re removing that stress, I think better. I sleep better. I feel better about what I'm doing. Now, the flip side of that is that when you buy cash properties, you have to attend, you, you typically have to do more work to make those properties uh you know, habitable to make them nice. So then I don't have a problem with doing work and you shouldn't have a problem with doing work either. Right. But if you don't have the skill set, then go to your nearest trade school and go get the skill set. And by doing that, you have a property, you know, if you get the skill set, you fix a property up. Now you have a property. Uh, now you have a property that's fixed up that has no mortgage that you're able to benefit from financially right away or that you can move into and alleviate one of the major debt factors for the majority of society, which is your rent or your mortgage. Typically, that's the our biggest expense as a people is our mortgage or our rent. And if you can figure out a way to just eliminate that, then that's cool. And then the next thing you do is get you a vehicle that you can pay cash for and eliminate that debt. All right. So now two expensive things that typically, you know, take away from our ability to invest because we're paying it every month. You've eliminated that puts you 30 years ahead of everybody else who has a 30 year mortgage. Just think about that. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about just that one thing. So and start looking all over the United States for these properties because they're there. Man, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate. You know what? You you practically got me uh, 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 thinking like wow um, you, you you're you're in essence have articulated better than, than uh, better than what I realized about what what Dynast and I are trying to accomplish with our carrot bars but you know but until we until we actually talk about so and see that's the thing what I'm saying to you guys that's what I've been saying so much and you know I, I, and we taking heat you know Dynast and I taking heat for this I, I really don't care anymore you know at the end of the day that's where we're trying to go. You know, to to get to create these uh, these incomes where we can be free and and take you with us for those who want to go. But this is what I've been trying to articulate to you guys: multiple streams. You have heard me say, "Hey, you know, it, it, it care bonds is not for you, or if it is for you, it can add to a stream. Great, it's not. But understand this: you have got to create multiple streams of income. That's what this whole sub topic, what we're talking about." Now, now, one of the things with creating multiple stream of income, you got to have one main stream to get the other one started. Correct. You know, being, 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 being whatever. And you know the biggest stream that you have? Your job. You Correct. know, and you, and you take a portion of your job and you invest it into you. You invest it into an appreciating asset that then you can roll into something uh, uh something uh, uh pretty cool. You hear about what this man said? He he uh he uh he got this shot over his bow. He's a highly educated man with a biology degree. You just don't get that by luck. Okay? He he goes he, he's working with the city of Atlanta. You know, he bowls out. You guys catch what he just said. You you he buys a house for 60 thousand dollars. You know, FHA loan. He pulls $20,000 out. Pays thirteen thousand dollars for a house cash 
in the state of Georgia. I know that area. That's where the CDC. That's a booming area. Dadas knows that area. So, right. so he went. He went to a plum location with a plum deal. Pays cash, and he and uh, and he also said, uh, "I got a tenant that's been in there for ten years." To say, are you catching what this man said? So he's yeah. not. He's not created. Oh, that's just one of his house. Now, obviously, yeah, you're talking intelligence like this. What now? What I'm hearing, this man has a heck of five real estate portfolio. And now, if he's buying houses in Baltimore, he has it in Baltimore. If he's buying houses in uh, in Baltimore in Ohio, he has houses in, in a portfolio. In Ohio. If he's buying in Georgia, he has a thing, and he's probably looking looking to take some dips in California. What he's probably going to do is pull a couple of those problems uh, properties together sometime in the future. Then he's going to hit commercial apartment complexes and stuff like that. No, they well, can what, with the team. So he's created those income. And this is what we're talking about. You got to have multiple stream income. Carrot bars has been the base for uh, for Dynas and I to do that. Pretty soon with our cryptocurrency, we'll be able to roll into stuff like that. But the first object of, of, of wealth is pay yourself first. The second thing is don't lose money. And the third thing is go back to one and two. Okay, that that's how it is. So man, you 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 are. Dude, you, you're you're get you know you're giving a carrot bar introduction in a carrot bar clinic right now, whether you don't even know it or not. But I do, <laughs> uh, and I recognize because that's what it's about: building multiple streams of income. It is not something that's cool to do. It is not something that would be nice. It is an absolute necessity, like you're breathing. I like the fact that Mr. Fabian bought out the 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 fact that you have enemies. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Mm -hmm. Understand that. And the one of the biggest enemies that, uh, uh, within our communities is economics. You know, yeah, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna tell you too. When we're watching these uh, these shows that Dynas is doing, and you have a thousand people watching and four hundred and fifty people watching, but you only have a hundred likes. Yeah, some of those people that's not hitting the like button are our enemies watching our plans. You know, going back and wondering how they can undermine what we're doing. Mm -hmm. All right, that's what's going on. Okay, no. the hate is real. It's mm -hmm. real. Trust me. That's why typically I don't come on social media. Some people ask, what's my platform? I don't have one. I respect what you're doing, Dinas. But for me, you know, I've, I've fought enough enemies. I don't need no more. So as out of sight is out of mind. Mm -hmm. I don't even I don't even want them to see me coming, you know, because by the by the time I'm there, it's too late. Uh -huh. You know, it's too, it's too late. I'm your next door neighbor now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate you doing this with, with that Fabian saying that, man. So, you know, and I don't use this word li lightly. You know, I, I thank you for your expertise. I thank, thank you. you added a, la a layer to mention, uh, you know, that, uh, you, you know, uh, even Michael Delco, for those of you who had him on last uh, last week, that that that's that's my carrot bar sponsor. You know, Dynast and I are both in this team, 65,000 affiliates, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, in several, several countries around the world, making a fortune and stuff like that. But you know what? He presented a side, you present a side, but we're all talking the same thing. You know, get your financial house in order. Get your financial house in order. Get yourself in a position where you're dealing with royalties, residuals, and dividends. Passive income. Because, you know, it's going to come one day, you, you're either going to get tired of doing what you're doing, or you're not going to be able to do it. Or you're going to be put out the pasture, better be known to you. So you, did, did you hear Did you hear about uh, uh, what Fabian said? And Don asked, and I already done had it happen to us. We're all college educated men, you know. And and, uh, and so when you hear what he said, he has a biology degree. When the city of Atlanta pulled that thing, he said fear came over him. Mm -hmm. Fabian, that's what happened to me. I didn't have yeah. the, I didn't have the thing like that. It shut me down. It, yeah. It shut me down. And, you know, I know what it is for your stomach to get tied up. I know, we, we, we were going to sales. And, and Don asked, you, 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 you were on a higher level than me, man. And but but we were going to sales, and and my boss, uh, you know, forgetting from his boss, every day would say, "Man, you know what? If you guys ain't pulling your numbers, we're going to let the whole department go." Dude, I had houses, I had things, you know. I mean, I I I couldn't, you know, when someone's politely threatening your income, man, it, it shakes you. You like, yeah. man, uh, or we're going to fire you, or man, if you ain't getting this, or you're on double secret probation, and you're not doing this, and man, it is, it is, you know, they. Fabian, they would have this talk with us, man, before we even go out today. You imagine someone telling you that. You know, you, yeah. you're having this talk, that be, this this dread sales talk. You're supposed to go out there and sell. But that was the nature of the beast. See, one thing you, with sales, it's great money, but high pressure. Now, right. that could come from the same thing with a law, a law firm, the, uh, with a couple of attorneys. You're not, you're not pulling up briefs. We're going to fire you. You're not pulling up hours. You're going to, we're going to fire you. An architectural firm. See, the, the, what you do is irrelevant. 
you know, but but you know, as long as you can do it, but there's gonna come a time whether some whether you sitting in traffic two hours in Atlanta, you can easily do that than going 14 miles easily. You know, LA, yeah. I'm quite sure you can do the same thing. You're gonna get tired. You're gonna you're gonna wake up one day and you're gonna realize that you're older. I mean, at at, at 55, I feel just like I'm 25. I'm just as strong as I'm 25. But I nevertheless, I'm 55 years old. What's going to happen if the next 10 years go by just as fast? And they will. Do I really mm-hmm. want to keep spending my time doing stuff that, you know, trying to make a living? Do I really want to have a life? Do I really want to enjoy the remaining time? And so th- two things I need. I, re- I need residual income and time and financial freedom in order to enjoy that. That's what this whole platform is about, giving it to you. But I'm also been willing to work, you know, and, and, uh, and learning the skills that I need. For example, if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, do some things of what we do, you gotta have people skills. You gotta learn how to deal with a whole bunch of personality. You gotta uh, you gotta learn how to deal deal with who is for you and who is not against you. And those who are those who are against you and playing, you gotta learn to eliminate them with swiftness and ruthlessness. You get rid of them because that's draining you down. You gotta learn how to you gotta learn how to read financial statements. You know you know where's my money going. You know, what, what can my money be better uh, better to do that? And you got to learn how to help each other, help other people. You got to make it so simple to them. They actually think they, they actually think that they can actually do what you do. And you can't. You can't come over there, you know, and try to overwhelm them with your, your bravado and your expertise and stuff. Because you know what? Maybe they're not at that level, but they just have the belief. And you got to jump in the trenches to help them. You know, those are the things that I've learned that, you know, that, that's helped me be successful and able, and able to do. And, uh, and then you gotta you gotta collaborate with people outside your industries, like like a Mr. Fabian. He may have not he may, but he has a level of skill and a in a in a point of view that maybe can help me b- b- enhance what I'm doing better. But you can't play with him. If you ca- if I call him and say, you know, I need some of your your expertise, he says, Fitzgerald, I can give you ten minutes. Give me a call at eleven o'clock. I don't give a call at eleven fifteen. Said you know I was in the shower. You know, I, th- that's the last time he's going to deal with me on a serious level. I can promise you that. And so you got to respect people, you know, who, who who are serious about their craft. You got to respect their time and you got to, you know, and you got to respect the advice that they give you. So but you need to collaborate, you know, and for that, I, I really, really thank you, dot ass man. I, you know what? You're the sh- you're the show host. Let me quit talking, man. But this guy's on it. This guy's on fired me up right here. Mr. Fabian, I'll tell you that because he has articulated better. You know what? What? What I've been trying to say since I've been trying to say it, he has really, really articulated what I'm coming home. Build multiple streams of income. And I, and I would the, the last the thing, thing that I would that contribute, I would contribute is that there, there are so many people, uh, you know, in the chat room, you know, going on these trips to Nigeria. Uh, these are some things that I would say become authorities in and, and, and do so very quickly. Water and wastewater treatment. There's, if you just do a search for Ken Carey, right? Ken Carey out of the city of Sacramento, uh, at Sac- uh, Sacramento uh, State, uh, there's a book that's provided on water and wastewater treatment. The book is probably about six or seven inches thick, but it will teach you everything that you want to know. What's the name Ken of that book, sir? I'm writing this down. I'm writing Ken Carey's numbers down. I'm writing this thing. What's the name of yeah, that book? Ken, Ken Carey, Water and Wastewater Treatment. Okay. All right. If you're planning to move to Africa, all right, I've already been doing research. There are not as many water and wastewater treatment systems um, in abundance as it should be. If this is something that you can learn, uh, and you go there and you make that your business, you will do very well. Um, building real estate in, in, in Africa is, is another, uh, another thing. So learn how to build. All right. Go to carpentry school. If you go to carpentry school in 18 months, you will know how to build a home from the ground up. You can then take that skill to Africa and build whatever it is that you want to do. All right. Um, in addition to that, in addition to water and wastewater treatment, building, I would say you need to learn um, how to operate heavy equipment. You can do that here in the United States, even something as small as a mini backhoe or, you know, a bobcat, right? You want to learn how to uh, operate excavators, cranes, bobcats, skip loaders, front loaders. You learn how to operate this heavy equipment and you bring that heavy equipment to Africa. 
you have created a microeconomy because there's people there that want to build, but a lot of the equipment is not plentiful. All right. I reckon I witnessed this myself when I went to Ethiopia and I saw when I was in Aromo land that all of the heavy equipment that was there was owned by the Chinese. All right. So keep in mind that when we relocate to Africa, we are relocating to Africa as immigrants. So we need to bring as much with us as we can, you know, to be able to lease out our services and to build whatever it is that we need to build. So, again, let's recap. Water and wastewater treatment, construction, heavy equipment operations, farming and import and export is the final thing. All right. These are the things that if you're serious about relocating to Africa in a way where you don't have to suffer greatly, where you don't have to start at the bottom. Right? These are some of the skills that you uh, that will be valuable that you should learn going over there. Water and wastewater treatment, construction, heavy equipment operation, import and export and farming. All right. That's, those are all the things that I'm into. And those are the skills that I'm bringing with me when I go to Nigeria, when 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 Dinas and I go in November and whoever else is going with us. We've already been in discussions. About, well, Dinas, should I should I say that part is OK to say that part that we've been in discussions about buying land there? Is that okay? Uh, yeah. fine. That's fine. Of course. All right. So we've already been in discussions of, of buying land there, you know, when, when we go down in November. All right. I'm, I'm looking at buying a plot that's 100 meters by 200 meters. Um, that's a little shy of five acres. OK, so that's that's all that I have to say. I'm not a genius. I'm nobody special. I'm just someone that's not really afraid of work. And I try to make things as simple as possible and insulate myself from harm. And you can do the same thing. All right. Maybe. Uh, I'm going to play advocate. I know what the answer is going to be for me, man. I'm 55 years old. Man, I got time to go back. Can I go back to school and learn at my age and make it pay off? I mean, yeah, let me, you yeah, know, let me ask you a question. I, you're 55. You're 55. That's mm -hmm. a nice young age. Do you plan to live until you're 60? I, but I live about till I'm about 85, 87. OK, <laughs> then you got time. Yeah, I, I know that for, as far as for me. But I, but but what? But but uh, I have no problem jumping in there and getting back and learn mm -hmm. that skill. Man, you definitely making me want want to do that right now. Uh, cause I, I don't have no, no desire to go get a master's degree. Cause I, you know, Hey, I don't want to add up more debt and get out there and go in the job. Like I want something that can pay off right away, but, uh, I don't have a problem. But I'm, I, what I, I really said that to thinking about those who, man, can I go back and really learn the skills and really get into the game and profit about at, at this age at 60, 65? Yes, you can. Yes, yes you really can. You know, yes, you can. once you acquire the knowledge of things like that, that knowledge, as my father would say, that can't be taken away from you. You know, and and, and what you want to well, when you get skills, you want to think in skills like this, something like Mr. Fabian's, something you could take anywhere in the world and be an asset. That man can hire that man can uh, to fall in practically any any uh, country in Africa. He's not unemployed because he has high quality value skills that is needed the worldwide. He could do it. He could do it in Dubai. He's not unemployed. You know, he, he can go to a, a Europe. He's not employed. You know, he's never unemployed. Now, that seems like a strange little kind of kind of turn. Biology major, medical, biology, could admit medical career, carpentry, electrical man. But he seems to me that he has less stress being a carpentry, electrical, real estate man. You know, the way I'm looking at it, I don't see any wrinkle lines on him. You know, and yeah. he seems like, you know, he, he's doing he's doing his doing his thing because he has peace of mind. Because he has peace of mind knowing that he is his own industry. And this is what this is what we're trying to this is one of the things we're trying to add to and to say to you guys. Be your and it, be your know. own industry. And it all it works, all works together. together. You know, you I'm know, taking calculus, physics, physics, chemistry, microbiology, organic chemistry, and all of these science classes, you know, basically teach you how to recognize mechanisms and formulas. And that's all that life is. You know, creating, solving an equation, you know, creating, looking at the formula of your life and solving the equation. You know, if, if, if your solution that you want is to be debt free, making a whole bunch of money and not having to, you know, be at the mercy of a job, you know, or have a supervisor that nine times out of 10 is less intelligent than you, 
you know, having their personal issues, placing them on you, then you have to solve that equation and you have to do so in a way where you make it as stress free as see, you, you make it as stress free as possible. And you do it, your, you know, you do it your way. So the problem, black people, we we know, and not just black people, all people, but I'm speaking to black people because I've lived my whole life as a black man. I don't know any other experience. So I'm speaking as black people. All right. Black people know what we want. We know that we want a nice house. We know that we want to look fresh. If you a black man, you want a fine woman. If you a black woman, you want a good husband. You know, we know the things that we want. We want nice cars. We, you know, some of us want jewelry. We want nice clothes. We want all of these things, red bottoms and nice shoes, all, all of this stuff. But what happens is we allow others to, to, to dictate the terms on how we're going to have the things that we want. And that's where we go wrong. Because when you have other people setting the terms, they're going to set the terms in their favor right. and not our favor. So then we suffer. So what we have to do is solve the equation to get what we want on our terms, right? Because when we create the terms, it's going to be beneficial for us and our families and our friends and our community and not someone else. You solve that equation and you will win every single time. That's it. That's all I got, That's all I got to say. Man, I, I, I cannot tell. I, I appreciate you, dude. And and I, I please, please, please don't let this be the last time. You know, you're coming in there because, man, you got a treasure trove of knowledge that the people need. I mean, you know, man, I, I read comments and that one comment said this is a renaissance man. And yes, he is. You know, he's, you know, gifted, gifted. They would call him a polymath back, so I believe, back in the uh, um, in the, uh, in the days of antiquity. You know, gifted in many different areas. Uh, you know, so please make don't do not be a stranger here, man. Please come on. No, I won't. And you know what? Give me one second because somebody may say, somebody may somebody listening right now or watching right now may say this guy is lying. He's not. He's not about that business. He's not doing what he's doing. And what I'm doing right now, I'm opening up this big 50 pound backpack that I carry with me every single day. All right. And inside of my backpack that I'm reaching for right now is this book. Let me see. Let me hold it up so you guys can see it. Right. Start your own import and export business. Right. Start your own import and export business. Why would I have this book if I wasn't interested in import and export? Well, what were one of the things that I talked to you guys about that you should learn? Import and export. That's what I'm pulling out of my backpack. All right. What else I got in here? Hold on. Oh, I said that I was in school right now. Every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. learning residential electrical installation at El Camino College. in I guess that's Torrance. It's like on the border of Gardena and Torrance. Right? Gardena and Torrance. Yeah, I'm very familiar. From okay. Here. What is this book? Oh, wiring. Wiring. This is our textbook in that class. Why would I have that book in my 50-pound backpack if I wasn't doing it? All right. So what I'm telling you is the truth. It's not a lie. It's not, a, it's not some fabrication. It's the truth. And if you want to win, that's what you, if you want to win, that's what you got to do. You got to put in the time. You got to put in the work. And that's it. I got some other stuff in here, but that's that's enough jewels for one day. Let me tell you what you did. And let me thank you personally, because I don't know who you reached in the audience. I'm not quite sure it's a few of it. But I can tell you what, you definitely reached this uh, uh, to reach this Floridian guy. Man, I'm thinking, you know what? I want to go ahead and look at some classes now because I'm talking about real estate. But I realized when talking to you, I ain't prepared to get in the game. You know, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm prepared because, you know, yeah, uh, you know, my, with my cryptocurrency and gold, once that start hits, it's going to be pretty dang substantial and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm not prepared to hit in the game because I'm making the exact same mistake that I made when I opened up my auto shop. I don't know the business. I don't know the mechanism. So you making me like you making me look down. Like, you know what? Let me look at some of these community colleges in Tampa. Let me see what the carpentry schools. I can I can pull that off. I can put some of my money and go take a class. You know, in eighteen months, I can have this type of certification. You know, and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah that's what you're making me do. And no. if you go full time, if you go full time, it took me eighteen months because I had a full time job, a full time job, even plus working overtime. Right? 
That's why it took me 18 months. But if you're somebody who doesn't have any direction, who's at home chilling, who don't really know what to do, you got all the time. You can go to class in the morning because typically the way that these trade classes work, they have morning programs, day programs, and evening programs. So if you don't got nothing to do and you sitting at home chilling, all right, you can go to the, you can get enter the program and go to classes in the daytime and in the nighttime and be done in nine months, nine months, nine months, less than a year. You can change your whole entire life. One more book in my 50 pound backpack. So we know that we want to have our house. We've established that we need to find a house that we can afford to pay cash for to have an ace in a hole. The next thing is the car. Me and Dinah had a conversation. We were talking about cars that we like. We'll just say that somebody, you know, likes a Porsche, right? They, <laughs> they, like, they like Porsche, all right? I said, okay, how much was that? He gave me a price. I said, do you know that if you get your dealer's license, you can go to Mannheim and some of these other dealer um, uh, auctions, and that car that you pay this certain price for, you could get for a third of that price? Oh, no, nah, man, are you serious? How do you know that? Here's another book. Here's another book. This book is Used Vehicle Dealer. All right. I'm getting my wholesale dealer's license. OK, you can take a class in one day. Go to the DMV, take a test, fill out the application, get your bond and insurance, and you can become a wholesale dealer. All right. By being a wholesale dealer, you go to a wholesale, you go to a dealer auction. You're able to buy cars. So let's say a Porsche Panamera, you know, may cost six or seventy thousand dollars. You can go to the auction and get a slightly used one with very low miles for fifteen thousand bucks. Fifteen thousand dollars. You can either keep it for yourself or you could turn around and sell it to somebody. You don't got to sell it to some. If you sell it to a brother, sell it to him for twenty five, thirty. Right. If you sell it to a non-brother, you sell it to him for 55, 60. <laughs> Make your money and keep on pushing. Here's that book right here. I'm not lying to you. Yeah, I'm, 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 right, you. I'm right. I'm writing it down. I'm, I'm writing it. You know, I, you know, and I hope and uh, and I hope uh, a lot of you guys, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this. Um, uh, I'm, uh, you know, as a as a student, I, I'm always continually learning. I hope a lot of you guys got a pen and paper like I'm doing right now. Write some of this topic this man is saying, or it, it, or if that escapes you, man, this video needs to be watched by you by you uh, about three or four times easily. You know, get what this man is saying. All right, well, the last thing, and I'm telling you, this is the absolute last thing. All right, I'm starting to sound like you got you two salesmen right now. This <laughs> last thing, last thing. All right. In every state, pretty much in the United States, they have a small business development corporation or small business development center. You need to write a business plan. Learn how you can go there and learn how to write a business plan for free. In this business plan guide, there are certain questions that they're going to ask you about your business in the book. All you got to do is just answer the questions. If you get stumped, then you need to kind of go rethink your idea. That's this book right here, right? The guide to writing, uh, trying to get it all in the screen, the guide to writing business plans from the small, uh, 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 from the small business development corporation. All right. The small business development corporation is the author. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're a group. Uh, a company, a governmental group that's all over the United States that provides services to people who want to go and start businesses. They help you with your business plan. They help you get funding. They help you with everything that you need. Grants, not just loans, grants, money that you don't have to give back. And when I went to this business plan class, I took the course. That's why the book is in my backpack, because I took the course. I was the only black person in there, the only one. And I don't say that as saying I was the only one. No, no, I'm not saying it like that. I'm saying, well, where, where my backup at? If all these other non-black people in here decide to jump me, where's my backup? Uh -huh. Where's my backup? They weren't there, right? So other groups are taking advantage of this information, and we are not. We're underrepresented. All right. So that's that's it. That's all the game I'm gonna give you for today. Okay, right. I want to ask I'm you something. I'm actually at work and I got to get back I wanna, to work. I, I want to ask you something real quick and thank you for your time. I want to be real brief. I have yeah. heard 
that and 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 uh, I have heard that a lot of these trade programs and vocational programs that uh, uh, in schools, particularly schools in rural areas, low income thing, people of color. You know, they they took out a lot of the plumbing, the welding, the drafting uh, programs. I used to be, I used to, when I was in school, uh, uh, they had drafting pro. We had the uh, the uh, the the far, uh, uh, future farmers of America where I can learn how to mess with weldings and stuff. But a lot of these trades need to be going out of uh, uh, going out of the local, the inner city community schools. But you better believe they're going on our suburbs. They're putting those in there. You know, yeah. and, and, as far as like that, because they understand, ladies and gentlemen, you listen. You can come out with a two year a two year degree in electrician and carpenting, coming out making eighty thousand dollars a year, and somebody who does spend about two hundred some thousand dollars on their on their four year degree wherever they come from. You know they're not making near nowhere near that starting out. And you know master plumber, you know a uh, uh, master master carpentry welder. You know how much an underwater welder makes. You know, oh. and, and, you know, uh, just just think electrician. You know how many linesmen are are, are needed right now. And because because some reason some people seem to think that if they have a hard hat on like this man here, a hard hat, and he has that blue collar, that he's not that that, that he's not successful or he doesn't oh. have uh, money. And, uh, and a lot of times guys like that can cash your check and give you change, you know, and you so called have the white collar. So consider this, you know, uh, Dinas. I'm gonna, Mr. Fabian, thank you, Dinas. I'm gonna let you do a brief thing. What we try to talk with carrot bars. And I'm going to let you tie all this in for us, what we're saying, because this man is not put on a clinic, you know, and, and, and dude, anytime I see your name up in there, I want you to come in. And even if I'm not on the stream, you know, I, 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 I'm willing to take a bow out and you two just collaborate because I, I got a notepad. I'll sit down there with a thing full of notes of what you're saying. So, man, I, I, Fabian, I appreciate you are the guys who we're looking for to, to help empower this, this global community that we're talking about. You're, you're, you're a cat that's doing it. You're a man that's doing it. So much respect for you, brother. Thinking about this, I don't know who your mentor was, whether it's father or uncle or or you know, just God just brought someone in your path. But look like you have look like you are seriously working the plan that you have designated because you ain't striking me doing anything haphazardly. So nothing but respect and admiration, love for you, man. Period. Hey, that uh, sentiment is thoroughly reciprocated upon you and brother Dinas. Thank you, Much love and respect to both of you. Thank you for all that you contribute and everything that you guys contribute is 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 just as valuable as what I've said today. So thank you. I appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing because we got to turn this ship around. We got to right the ship. So man, you. I'm going to send the invitation. You you in you in, uh, you in Dynas Care Bar business? Uh, I'm not. But you know what? Put another short stream income up there, man. You got You got to get. We, you know, hey, I ain't asked for nobody. You generally, I told someone and said, hey, if this is not for you. Then it ain't for you. You're gonna be the first cat I'm gonna ask on this stream. Now, you know, I want you in with us. I want you partner with us. You know, I'm asking you to come a part of his business. Make no doubt about it, because you are okay. exactly what we're looking for. You so know, I tell you, I tell you what. Man. This is what I do, and I'm a man of my word. I will go to Dynasty's link. I will read every bit of information that you have about your company. If that information is logical. And, and and beneficial if, if the information seems that it can be beneficial to me then i will sign up and i will jump in because and i can he, always he's not going to tell you anything if you want to call that you know uh, uh go on to carrotbars.com and look at okay. it for that and look a couple okay. things up on youtube but man to definitely see see a, 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 a man like you dude i can rest i can sit up there and i can sit up there and i don't have to you know bring that because you know i mean you're what you're what you're what we need. It's all about economic freedom, building up your own economy. Why do other air? Why do other groups choke us? And why do they strangle us? Why do they keep us? They do it through economics, because you don't have the economic power to back someone off of you, as my as my grandfather said. You got to get strong economically, but you also got a, a partner with the people in the Caribbean, the people in Africa, the 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 the, the people down in Brazil and stuff. We're a global community. We get strong economically, then you can buy, and then you can have something. You know, as far as you know, but, but build your community. You're not going to build your community on 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 a chicken wings and a prayer. You're not going to do it. You know, you got to have resources. And that's what that's what this is about. Don ask. Go ahead and take us home, brother. Yeah, everyone. Again, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. This uh, this this uh, live stream was very, very dynamic. Brother Fabian, thank you so much for uh, coming on uh, right. again. You know, it's all about just uh, 
a mentor of mine once said, it's better to have and not need than need and not have. So, you know, you obviously want to be have you obviously want to have multiple streams of income and have something, you know, rolling just in case uh, one stream falls off and, and the rug is pulled from under you. So, you know, me, I've been doing care bars. I've been, you know, I'm happy. You know, I'm not content, but I'm happy. You know, in in the direction that is going, so that's why I'm so passionate about it. That's why brothers like Fitzgerald is passionate about it, and that's why we would love to have brothers like Fabian come and join us. So, guys, once again, the affiliate link is in the chat room. Copy uh, that two five zero. Um, sign up as an affiliate. Again, the link is in the chat room. Will also be in the description, and is also on the screen. S register as an affiliate. I will personally call you. OK, then I'm going to connect you to Fitzgerald and we're going to get you up and roll up and running so we, we can ensure that you're successful. Uh, Fitzgerald, something you want to add or? This is okay. the most successful care bar. This is the most successful care bar stream, including including my mentor, Michael Delco, coming on last week, because mm -hmm. you know what? This is a man outside the business doing exactly what we've been trying to tell you guys, creating multiple streams of income, and he's happy about what we do. I cannot thank that man enough. And, uh, sir, you know what? I cannot thank you enough. You know, I, you know, I know you don't deal with social media, and that's cool, but you know what? I definitely, I definitely, I ain't asking for your personal cell number, but I asked the honor that you personally put my personal cell number in your phone. Because you know what? You, you, you got, you, I'm not joking. I'm not joking, you know, and, and uh, I because man, you got something, you got something, you uh, you know, the, the not not our community needs, but the world needs. But you know, but I, I believe I believe in I believe in uh uh in the helping comes at home first. That's just how I do, you know. And and so so man, I appreciate that. Thank you for for saying you said you said better about my opportunity in my business. You've articulated better than what I uh, what I've ever been saying and stuff like that. all seven weeks are coming down there. And I'm not saying that the most spoke up your butt. I'm telling you the flat out truth. You you, you got you you are the, you you got me, man, just writing like this to keep up. And I promise you I'm gonna watch this video at least three times. I promise you that. And uh, looking yeah. for the content, what you said, and, and I'm gonna take some of your advice. You know, far as like that, because you know what? You show me how they create some more additional streams of income. In addition, yes, to thank you. Thank you. Hey, you gentlemen, have a good day. I got to get back to making this money. Okay. And uh, Diane, so I'll be chopping it up with you a little later. Fitzgerald, oh. um, I will put your number in my phone. I'll get your number from Dinus a little later Ooh. when I get off of work. And uh, and and I'll take a look at Care Bars. I give you my word. That's what I'll do. If it's mm -hmm. for me, I'll jump in. And we'll go ahead and make even more money. That's okay. okay. That's a appreciate that's it. A appreciate it. Dynast and I appreciate it. His link is up there. It's free to join. Come in as an affiliate. You know, as far as like that. But man, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank much you. love and respect. Peace. All right, brother. Appreciate it, man. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. Make sure you go to search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, family, Dynast Samir, search for Huru. Peace.